The setting is Eastern Europe. Shortly after the fall of the Berlin Wall, a Michigan man from a small town evades private investigators while smuggling his highly sought after product from Europe to the United States. Take a look. No one knew where he came from. But everybody wanted what he was selling. Pez, it's like printing money. Some pairs are quite rare. And how much is this worth? Between three and four thousand dollars. Collectors wanted what was available in Europe, and so I was like, Dad, let's see what we can get, you know, right from the factory. Being that close to illegal, maybe illegal. That product, colorful, rare Pez dispensers. This unique story is the basis for the documentary, The Pez Outlaw. And we are happy to be joined by one of the directors, Amy Banlian Storkel, and Steve Glue, whose incredible story is the subject of the documentary. Thank you both for joining us. Hey, Steve. Hello. <laughs> so this is, is a film about your former business empire smuggling rare collectible Pez dispensers unavailable to the U.S. market and your dramatic encounters all along the way. What are some of the, the scariest, uh, craziest encounters that you had? Driving on sidewalks, border crossings, had, being told one morning I had to report to the police. You say in the little snippet that we showed that it, it seemed like it was right on the border of being illegal, but maybe a little illegal. Did you realize at the time just what a fine line there was there? Yes, absolutely. But I, I didn't think about it. Um, coming from where I come from, it's just not something you worry about a lot. At the height of your career, how much were you collecting as a result, money-wise, of, of getting these, these rare collectibles? In 11 years, I earned $4.5 million, and I had one shipment was a half a million dollars worth of product. Wow. So hundreds of thousands of Pez. And, and Amy, I'm so curious, how did you come across this story, and what was your first reaction to it? Well, we first read about it in a couple articles, and then that pointed us to Steve's blog, and he's been blogging for 20 years, telling his story. And so, yeah, our reaction was, it all sounded a little bit too crazy to be true. Um, we weren't sure, like, what was, like, what's real, what's what's his imagination, what's the storytelling, and, um, but it was just fascinating. I mean, there was so much there that we finally uh, just reached out to Steve and then ended up flying out to Michigan to meet him and his wife, Kathy, and, and then we just knew that this was an amazing story. And uh, Steve, this film really takes a playful and creative approach to its storytelling, mostly seen in the reenactments that Amy just described. How did you decide the tone uh, that you wanted to take with those? Because you're just really playing yourself. <laughs> I, I don't look at me. I just try to express. I tried to give them what they wanted. They, they asked me if I would do this, do that, and we just did everything, whatever they needed. What was the biggest challenge for you? Playing me. <laughs> Is that hard? <laughs> Is that hard to do? <laughs> um, he's not somebody I want to look at a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got that gnarly beard, first of all, so that, that's super cool. And, and speaking of the reenactments, uh, this film really is serious at the same time, still embraces a more playful, creative storytelling. Uh, what was the thought behind that, Amy? How did you straddle both? Well, it was really important to us. I mean, Steve's story, uh, you know, the, the headlines are all very fun and crazy and colorful um, and adventurous. But when we, you know, when we make a, a, a film, we want to make sure that it's not just all surface level. And so in meeting Steve, we were really excited to know, to learn that he had so many more layers. He goes so much deeper. And, and Steve, as Amy just described, you do share some deeply personal struggles, including your mental health, uh, your finances before you got into Pez smuggling and the struggles after the U.S. distributor of Pez wiped you out of business. Uh, why did you think it was so important to include all of that in the documentary? The mental health issue, I, I was really happy because people need to talk more about what they're going through. You're a victim twice whenever you, with, if you suffer from depression and you bottle it up and think you're weird. It's better to be honest, open. I, I, I try to teach people to talk, um, not to lock it up.
not to hide. Amy, what would you like people to take away uh, who watch the documentary? It's something that kind of the world needs right now, it feels like. You know, there's so many movies and documentaries that are important but are kind of depressing and leave you feeling a little bit lost. And this one is the opposite of that. This will make you feel hopeful and inspired. Well, Amy Band, Leanne Storkel, and Steve Glue, we thank you so much for your time and good luck with the documentary. Thank you. Thank you. The Pez Outlaw will be in select theaters and available on demand starting Friday. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.